Hey, so stop me if you've heard this before. Don't actually stop the video, that's just an expression. But using a trusted third party like Google to handle sign-in for your app can be a great benefit for everybody. Your users don't have to come up with yet another username and password, and you as a developer don't need to like hire a full-time security team to keep that all safe. That said, developers had a few concerns with Google's original sign-in library for iOS. Your users needed a Google Plus account, which not everybody had. It was also kind of big. And if your users didn't have the Google Plus app installed, it would swap them out to Safari in order to complete the sign-in process, which was a kind of clunky user experience. This also led to some issues during the app review process, which is never a good thing. But I'm happy to report that we've addressed all these concerns with the new Google sign-in library for iOS. Let's find out more on this episode of Route 85. So let's imagine you've got an app and you want your users to sign in. Maybe so they can use their account on different devices, maybe so they can access their data on your server. You know, there's a number of different reasons. And while you could certainly deal with this yourself by having your users create their own usernames and passwords and storing them in a database somewhere, this can be a hassle, particularly if you don't have a dedicated security team working 24-7 to keep that database safe. Do you? And, and no, your cats don't count. Oh, but that is good advice though. So for many developers, a better option is to let a trusted third party like Google take care of the sign-in work for you. Your users can sign into Google using an account that they already have, and we give you some profile information that you can then use to identify that user for your app. And so that's what you're looking at here. I'm clicking the sign in with Google button so that I can sign into my account. I uh, copy and paste my password so that you people can't see it. I'm on to you. I click the accept button and uh, there we go, I'm signed in. So does this look somewhat familiar? I bet you it probably does. We have had sign in available for many years now as part of the Google Plus library on iOS but I'm using the new and improved Google sign-in library, which comes with a number of improvements that you might not be aware of. For starters, I can now sign in with any Google account, whether or not I've signed up for Google Plus with that account. Now, granted, if you wanted to like see my Google Plus relationship status or see who's in my circles or what have you, you could still do that. You'd add some Google Plus scopes to your sign-in request, and then I would need a Google Plus account. But if all you're looking to do is just sign in a user so that you can remember who they are, and maybe get like their name and profile picture, just a plain old Google account is all I would need. For another thing, it's a lot more lightweight. This new sign in library is about a third the size of the old one, which means there's less stuff for your users to download, and you know, that's always a good thing. And finally, the user experience has been greatly improved. With the older version of sign in, signing in involved one of two options. You could switch over to the native Google Plus app, or you could switch to Safari. Now, using the, the native Google Plus app wasn't so bad. In fact, it was pretty slick. It was, it was nice. But not everybody had that installed, which meant that they were stuck with swapping out to Safari, and this tended to be a less slick experience, and one that sometimes led to rejections during the app approval process. And uh, that didn't just make users sad, it made developers sad too. So with the new version of Google Sign In, we'll first try and switch you over to any native Google app you might be signed into, whether that's Google Search or YouTube, Maps, or, or what have you. But if your user doesn't have any of those installed, well, that's not a problem. We now slide up the sign-in page in a UI web view right within the application. There's no more switching out to Safari. Hooray! Oh, and both these experiences get a whole lot better in iOS 9. For starters, we're able to use a Safari view controller for the embedded web view, uh, which is not only more secure than using the old web view, but it also means that if your user has already logged in to Google in Safari, they don't need to do it again when they sign into your app. So that whole enter your username password thing you saw earlier, we get to skip that. And switching to a native app is now super, super slick. Uh, since iOS 9 is in beta, according to Apple's NDA, I'm technically not allowed to show you what it looks like. So this picture of a unicorn barfing a rainbow will have to give you a general idea of how great it is. But, but seriously, the whole experience, it looks really nice in iOS 9. The team did a really good job. I, I think you're gonna be happy here. So uh, to get started using Google Sign-In, you can check out our documentation here. Please note that the old sign-in experience is still available as part of the Google Plus library, and it still sometimes shows up in search results. Uh, so you wanna make sure you're looking at the documentation with the green header here, uh, not this documentation with the red one. But hey, you've made it to the end of this video, so you must like videos, or, or maybe you just like me. How you doing? Either way, how about I treat you to a little video of my walking through the process of adding Google Sign-In to an app. Come on, follow along, it'll be fun. As for the rest of you, if you don't like screencasts, that's okay. I'll still see you soon on Route 85.